Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week, here on In-Depth Outdoors. Oh, yes, big walleye, super taker. <laughs> big fish. Oh my goodness, bad monster, monster pocket. <laughs> We are headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Got him. All right. That's what smallmouth fishing is all about right there. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. And before we roll right into today's show, uh, I want to talk a little bit about current conditions. Uh, here it is, the second week of April, 2013, and we are living through the winter that will not end. Now, the reason I mention this is because it's really affected our ability here at In-Depth Outdoors to uh, air our shows the way we want them to be aired. Uh, we want to be able to film and air them in the same week, and that just hasn't been possible. But I can see spring out there on the horizon, and what that means is you can expect in the coming weeks, uh, after today's show, the shows will be filmed same week, aired on a Sunday. So that should make our information, our content that much more current, and bring you a great combination of exciting open water, and maybe even some ice fishing action as we close out our broadcast season. So, that said, let's talk about today's show. I'm gonna be fishing with John Marshall. Uh, one of the things I love about fishing with John is you never know what's gonna come out of his mouth next. He's one of those guys that always has a smile and is pretty much up for anything. Uh, and that's important because uh, when I asked John if he wanted to do this, I basically told him it was a shot in the dark, we we're gonna go do something crazy, we we're gonna go try to catch a lake trout out on Lake Superior midsummer fishing jig and plastic, no trolling. If you missed the episode we filmed last fall with Grant Sorensen, uh, you're going to want to check that out. If lake trout are one of the species you're interested in, we got into some giant 30, 35 pound lake trout trolling spoons and lead core out on Lake Superior. So now, one of my goals for this season is really very simple. Target those same fish and figure out a way to consistently put them in the boat using jig and plastic. Uh, I love fishing using that method and any time that I can catch a fish on a jig, it's that much more enjoyable for me. So today's show is all about starting to lay the groundwork, starting to figure out patterns for how to catch these giant Lake Superior Lake Trout fish and plastics. Do we get into the big fish today? Well, you're gonna have to stick around, watch the show and find out. But do know that what this is all about is we're building something, a show where we figure out how to catch these giant lake trout using nothing but a plain lead head jig and a great big piece of plastic. So stick around. I think you're gonna enjoy today's show. Yeah, that's awesome. My man, Johnny Marshall. Nicely done, Johnny Marshall. Nice. <laughs> that's the way to start the day. That took all of no time whatsoever. Here's your laker. Will John get that lake trout? <laughs> Nicely done, dude. Whoa. <laughs> Hey, Butterfingers. Yeah, that's the way you do it in the big league. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Get back and get a not a one. Here's how that one went out just for a review. I don't think I'm hitting bottom. If you feel tap, drop it right back down to him. He'll take it. Boom! <laughs> I'm going to a heavier jig and one of them fancy paddle tail thingies you got going on there. That's a man jig right there. <laughs> Two ounces. I think that's like an eight aught. Just nasty sharp hook. That right there, that's Captain Insano swim bait right there. <laughs> I just, I've never caught a fish on one of these. Today I've had today. them, I, I, I bet you I bought them five years ago, three years ago, whatever. Been sitting in my boat just waiting for a reason or a use. Today's the day. These Lakers, the mouths are so hard that if you take like a, a regular walleye jig, and even if it's heavy enough, the hooks that we use in walleye jigs very often, they're kind of soft as far as the steel's concerned, and you'll stick the screws to one of these lake trout and that hook will just go Wah! and bend right out. And the fight that you'll get out of a fish that size is just incredible, so we've uh, optioned up a little bit on the gear. I'm gonna put a little stinger on there. We're gonna go Captain in Shado. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Drop it back down. Drop it back. <laughs> Chad, you just make me happy. <laughs> just watching you. 
That's two for two on the drop back. That, and you know what? You'll fight them 30 feet up sometimes. They'll get loose and just drop it back to them. They'll hit it again. There you go. Oh, while you're dealing with that, I'm gonna get back in there. I might have to go to the old chartreuse jobby, huh? Yeah, we got a pattern started. Now look how fat that thing is. Putting that one back. We will get them much bigger. That makes me excited. We will not get them smaller than that. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. Better fish. Yeah. Better fish. Johnny Marshall, better fish. How's that there, musky man? That ain't half bad, I'll is it? I'll tell you what, I could get used to this. This is good stuff. Look how fat these things are, John. Ooh, he's like the fat Albert of the fish kingdom. That is a fat fish. You know, when uh, we were out here in July, they were um, eating um, eel pout. You know, one foot long eel pout in a fish that size. No kidding. Yeah. Off I go. Well, wash, rinse, repeat. I think we're probably able to do this maybe 30, 40 times a day. The fish gods cooperate at all. I'm on board with that. I tell you what, I get hit one more time short like that, I'm switching to a smaller bait. I'm kind of subscribing to the go big or go home theory here. I dig it. <laughs> fish on. I don't know if that fish hit it on the way down and then followed it back up or what it did, but I got just throttle on the way down. Huh. I got this one. John, you keep fishing. I think we're in a spot where we could double up pretty easy. Look how fat. <laughs> Jesus. I'm gonna let him go. Whoop. Shwoof. <laughs> you gotta love them for all that aggression, John. This now, this is exactly what I envisioned that's doing. How many is that, John? Fish up. How did I know I was gonna get two, John? <laughs> oh, Johnny missed one. Johnny missed him again. Drop it back down. Come on, first double, buddy. We can do it. There we go. <laughs> hey, this is all right. This is about second chances. <laughs> Second and third and fourth and ninth. This is a fish made for somebody who's easily distracted. Oh, we know how to have a good time, right, John? Yeah. Okay. Let my little guy go. I think it might be one of our better fish, bud. I've got the uh, feeling that if we'd have had four guys in the boat, we'd have had four fish there. I mean, that was just a lot of bang, 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 bang. Fish everywhere. Whoa. So there's like a high spot over here that comes up, you know, 40, 50 feet. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of drops down and goes deeper, uh, basically southwest to northeast. And on the ends, out towards the northeast, there's a, there's a lobe out here. And it always seems like once uh, the, the sun comes out and the, and the lake lays down, this is where those fish go. That's a nicer fish, John. That's uh, seven, eight, nine pounds. Guess what I got a players for you. It's fun when they hit like that. Three, four. Nicely done, bud. That's a nicer fish, John. I like the way the day's going, James. They're getting bigger as the day goes along. I'm not sure you can handle a 20 pounder yet, John. <laughs> there he goes. Nicely done, John. You have restored your fish catching honor by taking the lead for the largest fish. <laughs> still down by one? So it's still down by one. Stuff happens. A lot of day left. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. A pair of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, we fish and tackles Authentex Plastics. The Moxie, with its thin profile, beefy belly, and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow, producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at beefishandtackle.com before your fishing buddies do. This just in. Search now over for one suspect found hiding under a brush pile. Suspect was taken into custody and released this afternoon. Officials credit the apprehension to the new Markham underwater camera technology, which found and caught the suspect. Markham has really taken the lead with their on-screen displays for temperature, depth, and direction, helping you get to the fish quicker. In other news, a missing walleye was captured today, once again caught red-handed on a Markham camera. Stay tuned for more news from the Markham Underwater Network, where we seek, find, and capture the lake's most wanted. There you go. Ooh, James. I don't know how big he is, but that is one persistent trout. <laughs> this is what I just love about fishing for these lake trout. That fish was hooked up on the fourth hit. Three other times, he smacked me and managed to get free of the hooks in that bait. I take a lot of pride in being able to catch walleyes consistently. You know, there's a lot of little nuance going on there when you're fishing walleyes, but this is kind of like the anti-walleye. Give me something big obnoxious with a thumper tail, put it down there and I'll eat it, is basically the, the lake trout's mentality. I've never seen a lake trout attack a bait, but the way it feels, and of course, based on the number of fish that hit, that don't get hooked up, they seem like they're real slashers. They come in, they swing at the bait, and it's almost like they're not concerned about getting the bait in their mouth, they just wanna kill it. 
So very often what you'll feel is that bang. And you know, one of the things I really want to point out is we're running a trailer hook on these baits. Just drop that lure back down in there. Bang, he'll come back and hit it again. And very often you get that fish hooked up on that stinger hook. Decent fish, bud. Not a giant, but you know what? Where can you go and catch, you know, three to what? You just had that nice one that was, you know, eight, nine pounds. Yeah. Oh, they're so fat. You know, that fish, if it was a walleye, it would weigh four pounds. But just because of how fat they are, thick they are, he's gonna go five, five and a half. Just a real fatty. I'm gonna let him go real quick. No point in keeping him out of the water. So boom. You know, water temps right now are in the uh, mid to low 50s. Uh, these fish are gonna be uh, very uh, uh, survivable uh, at these temps. You come out here in July and August, you gotta be real careful about how long you fight the fish and how quickly you let that fish go. But right now with these cooler water temperatures, you can fight them, uh, you know, enjoy that fight, let them go and they just go darting right back down to the bottom. There's the, uh, there's the business, just a swim bait. And what we've done is we've got that trailer hook and what I like is I like to make the distance from the main hook where I've got that 20 pound fluoro tied down to the treble hook the exact length of the bait. So you can see I've got just that one treble hook just nipped in the tail of the bait and what I found is it retains a very good action in the water. What I don't want to do is have a longer trailer hook that gets wrapped up in the tail or if you have a shorter hook that's even worse the tail will go up over that short hook and what you end up with is something that basically looks like that. You're not gonna catch any fish when a swim jig looks like that. Where's your fish, John? You should have two by now. Oh, did you see that? It's very, there you go. Just, just drop it right back down to him. I got him, little guy. I want an assist on that fish. <laughs> catch your own fish. <laughs> it's just a little guy, just a runt. There he yes. is. Yes. Oh, he's that was, off. Just drop it back down, drop it back down. <laughs> that is actually a redfin. Oh, and he is not happy. He's saying, let me go. And that's why we run that stinger hook. Right there, they grab at that tail, they slash. We're feeling them, you know, pop, smack, hitting those baits. Without that stinger hook, you miss so many fish. You can really get frustrating doing it that way. It's a smaller hook that hooks up the fish, no damage done and you're able to get a lot more fish in the boat because of it. All right, buddy. Boom, like a lawn dart, gone. You know, uh, John, we, because the, the skies are so high, clear, and sunny right now, we might want to switch you away from that chartreuse. Yeah, the natural pattern seemed to be the hot ticket right now. This morning, when we first got out here, that chartreuse was just money. But I, I think right now they're kind of batting at it even more so than they normally would. Uh, seven, eight bucks will get you one of these natural pattern minnows. <laughs> All right. Money well spent. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. At Skeeter Boats, our passion for turning great ideas into even better fishing boats has produced an unmatched lineup of models intended to fit the way you fish. Like the WX series, designed to handle big water in tough conditions, including the new MX1825, built from the ground up to be the ultimate 18-foot fishing boat. And Skeeter Bass Boats, setting the standard for speed and fishability. Skeeter, engineered like no other. Are you okay running a spinning rod? Yeah. I, I know you musky guys, you look at a spinning <laughs> rod and you know, get a little out of sorts. As long as it doesn't get aired. Oh, it'll get aired. <laughs> There we go again. <laughs> First time ever seen in the wild, John Marshall working a spinning rod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could get used to this type of fishing. <laughs> Look at that swim bait on that fish's face, how big it is. Oh, I just it just smoked it too. Caught on the main hook. Yeah, that fish wasn't going anywhere. Look at the size of this swim bait. We're gonna put this one back. The water here is extremely clear and being able to see the relief shot is just spectacular. You don't see conditions like this out here on the big lake very often, John. Yesterday there was 15 foot waves out here. Do you wanna hear the saga of getting ready for this trip? I wanna hear the saga. You know, I, I wanna know that you 
bled a little for this trip. Not quite blood, but pretty close. <laughs> uh, the biggest challenge was getting the Michigan license. Easy to do online. Right, it's supposed have, to be. If you have a printer, you know. <laughs> so I had a printer, I just never, uh, never, never hooked it up. I'm kind of a, I guess a paperless guy which ended up being a completely paperless guy. Got the printer hooked up, but didn't have any paper, so I literally ripped the back end of a Mickey Mouse coloring book out. You have a Michigan license printed on the back cover of a Mickey Mouse. It's yellow and green. <laughs> it looks like construction paper. I gotta see it, John. It qualifies. <laughs> nice. Well, at least you didn't pr print it over Mickey's face or something. It looks legit. You know, next time, uh, let's do like, uh, I don't know, Raggedy Ann and Andy or something. Perfect. Print it right over the top of the picture. <laughs> I'll have paper on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> fish on. The cloud cover is going to come in. We're going to get a nice class of fish. I'm going to get the net, James. I don't think it's that big, John. I think you should keep fishing and see if you can't get yourself a, a dubba. This is the first time that I've come out here to jig these lakers. Oh, James. See, that's why we keep them in the water. Oh. You got a horse there, buddy? Yeah, I got a good one. I'll take care of this little guy. He's all of what I thought he was. Yeah, this one's definitely got a little more shoulders to it. I'm really after fish more like John's got going on there. This one came out of what, about 100, 100 feet? 105, somewhere in there. Pretty fish, John. Yeah, all hooked a little bit, but. I mean, you just never know how you're gonna get them. The fish I'm used to catching, are, I try to shove right into the camera. So they, <laughs> so they look like his fish. I'll get him back in the water. All right, I think he's ready to go. Those red fins are pretty. It's definitely that bigger swim bait, John. I mean, it absolutely has not cost you a fish today, and I would say that uh, you've got three or four of the, the bigger fish because of that bait. Yeah. This is no messing around fishing. You know, instead of those little leeches on a Lindy rig, feed them line, this is go big or go home, fish it aggressive, throw it on a two ounce jig, bounce it up and down, and uh, these lake trout are just wired that way. Oh, what you got there, John Marshall? Is that a whole different critter? <laughs> Oh, that was another fish that, uh, like you said, right on the drop, and when you watch these swim baits go down, you can see why. On average, it's helping you catch a better average size. That's a that's an 8, 10-pound fish, Sean. Yeah. But I have bigger swim baits than that. <laughs> the next time that cloud cover comes back in and I think they're going to get aggressive, I'm putting one of those bigger baits on. Yeah, I think that one's the biggest of the day, James. And like you so. said, you've got, uh, you've got a little bit of time before the clouds move back in. That's a beautiful fish. We'll get back in the water here. <laughs> he, he had different plans. Nicely done, John. Awesome. You know, out in this huge Lake Superior, you've got so much area to cover, and I would imagine that these fish don't get a lot of feeding opportunities. So when they do get one, they just cream it. And that's why when you have one of these fish hit, they miss it, they'll hit it again and again and again. We've had uh, probably a half dozen fish today that I've hit three or four times before we put a hook into them. So. There's not very many fish that'll do that. You think about your walleye fishing, they don't come back three or four times. That type of aggression fish matches my style really good. <laughs> I, need, I need a couple shots. If I could get muskies to come back like lake trout, <laughs> I'd have a lot more pictures to show you. This is kind of like the combination of the two, only two real fishing activities I do. The, kind of the vertical aspects of ice fishing and and uh, combined with the fight of the bigger predators. That's why, that's probably why it seems like I'm a natural. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A pair of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, we fish and tackles Authentex plastics. The Moxie with its thin profile, beefy belly and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow. Producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at BeFishAndTackle.com before your fishing buddies do. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. 
So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. Holy biscuits. That's what we're talking about. Just a big wad of bait fish. That is a buffet line snack bar. You see that guy right there? That's dinner rolls. Next to him, that's jello salad. Man, look at all that. Just like vertical jigging through the ice, man. There are a lot of parallels between what we're doing and ice fishing today. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it so fun. Ooh, just got decked. Which is one of those. What are you doing? <laughs> Smooth operator. Oh yeah. This guy's mad. No frosting on his cupcake. It kind of feels gypped or something. Oh, is that a heavy fish? There's the nice fish. There's a look at that. Big swim jig. Some of the bait fish here in Superior Smelt. A herring. They're all big. That's what fuels these fish. Of course, along with eel pout. That is a quality lake trout anywhere. I'd take him any day of the week. All right, sweetheart. Back to the depths with you. Whoosh. Absolutely. <laughs> These fish are really stroking it. I mean, obviously it's kind of like that the prime time of the day, but I mean, it's just solid whack. Here we go. I got one doubled up. Mine isn't much of uh, anything over here. Right now I want to hurry up and get this fish in the boat so I can get back down there. Hand me the net. I'll take your rod. Nice. Oh, that's a female, look, she's spilling eggs. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Um, one thing that's going on there, she's dripping eggs right now. So I'm glad you did it over your chair. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nicely done, John. Little uh, lake trout row. Yeah. That was like three bang, bang. That was awesome. What's going on there? I don't know. There's kind of a monkey pile down there at the bottom. <laughs> Something's got to pop here. Oh. I see it. Did he go downtown with it? Oh, no, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> this is his jig that came down. And this fish followed him down to the bottom and this is him fighting it back up. So it really is pretty much an exact detail of how that all transpired. That fish picked that jig up when it was still falling, you know, 40 feet above bottom. There's a pile of them down there, James. Feel like a good fish or what? Oh yeah. Move your foot then. <laughs> is this our uh, going home fish? This is the last pass. I tell you Without what, this... question, this is our last pass. Nice. That's a beautiful fish to end the day on. Oh, is he heavy? There you go, bud. Thank you, sir. I'm going to keep fishing because I want to catch a double. But what we got going on here, this is going to be our last pass. It's about 6 o'clock in the evening. Of course, it's late in the fall. Uh, days are short. Uh, this is the first time that John and I have ever done this lake trout fishing, this jigging up here in Lake Superior. Uh, fall is really the right time to do this. What you want to look for is cooling water temperatures. A very warm summer, 2012. Temperatures were very high, up in the lower 70s. And once the temperature started to drop into the 50s, these fish started to come in shallow. So if you're looking to get in on a bite like this, what you want to do is check water temperatures for Lake Superior online. In fact, if you Google Lake Superior water temperatures, the very first two links that'll pop up for you will be... Nice. <laughs> Got him. James, I'm going to put this one back. The very first two links you see will be water temperatures for the entire lake. Once you start to see them drop into the 50s, it's time to come fish these Lake Superior Lake Trout. And that's how you end a show right there, a double. They're probably the ugliest hook set you've ever seen, John. <laughs> <laughs> what makes this so great is, you know, a couple of jigging rookies can come out here and catch a couple, uh, a couple dozen real nice lake trout. I mean, most of these lakers of today have been four to 10 pounds. That's a real nice average. Of course, Lake Superior can kick out some real beasts, but even on a day when you don't get into that one magic fish, this is, this is nice. I mean, he cracked it. Yeah, I'll take numbers. Even on days when you don't get into that one great big fish, the numbers will always be there for you. This is uh, one of my bigger fish in a while, I think. Another red fin. Thank you, sir. Yeah, if I was you, I would uh, drop uh, back down to the bottom and get after it. Don't have to tell me twice. Hey, John, if I were you, I'd uh, drop back down to the bottom <laughs> and get after it. Such a beautiful fish. These are referred to as uh, red fins for very obvious reasons. What separates them from some of the other fish we caught today, uh, they're referred to as siskiwits. Uh, they're real fat and they live in deeper waters. Uh, they will accumulate more fat in their body tissue and take on that real roly-poly look of so many fish we caught today. Although we have had our fair share of these nice red fins as well. Bye, buddy. Did I say this was gonna be the last pass? Without <laughs> question, this is our last pass. All right, let's go make a different run. And this is our last pass. Did I say this was gonna be the last pass? <laughs>
I think I heard, yeah. <laughs> there was an echo. It kind of probably threw the sound off a little bit. Out <laughs> question, this is our last pass. Uh, I heard one more, I think. <laughs> For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.